friends, greetings. Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. We're still in the Christian season of Easter, so let's begin this service with the traditional Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Actually, today is the fifth Sunday in the season of Easter, but of course it's also Mother's Day. Mother's Day always touches people in different ways. For many, it is a day marked by a sense of joy, an opportunity to give mum a gift and a hug. For, other, for others, it's a time of sadness because mum's no longer around. And indeed, for some, it stirs up difficult memories and feelings. This year with COVID-19, the way we mark Mother's Day will no doubt be very different, with family get-togethers very much curtailed. We continue to be amazed by the people who are tuning into these videos. Please continue to share your feedback with us. And why not share the YouTube link to the St Luke's Heighton channel with a friend so that they can share in these videos as well. Next week, Sunday the 17th of May, following the premiering of the service as usual, there will be an opportunity to share online in an interactive way. And we'll be uh, promoting the way you can do that through uh, emails and other channels. Let's pray. Gracious God, you are the source of all good things. In these sunny autumn days, we are grateful for the wonder of your creation, displayed in the beauty of the dropping, drifting leaves, coloured deep shades of red and yellow. We praise you for you are our sure foundation and our refuge in the storm. And you have given your very self to us in the gift of your son, Christ Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. We give thanks that we are called to share in the life of the body of Christ, the church, and that even though we are unable to gather in one place as a community of faith, we are still one in Christ. On this Mother's Day, we are mindful of and give thanks for nurturing and loving relationships. And in so doing, we recall that it is in Jesus we see the true way of love lived out. Forgive us when we have not loved you, O God, or our neighbour with a love that reflects this way of Jesus. Forgive us too when we have failed to value ourselves as you value us. And remind us that your blessings are poured out in many ways, through many people and give us the confidence to reach beyond our own lives to help others. Enable us to be open to hear your word to us in these days. May we offer you all the praise, our rock and our refuge. In the name of Christ. Amen. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty act of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. John chapter 14, 1-7 Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself, so that when I am where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where are you going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Amen. In John's Gospel, there are a series of seven sayings that are attributed directly to Jesus that begin with the words, I am, such as in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. And in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Last week we heard a section of John chapter 10 in which Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. 
And in today's reading, we heard another one of these I am statements, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Found in Jesus, in other words, are those things that give meaning, substance, hope and direction for us. Or to put this in yet another way, the way of Jesus, that way that includes the cross and the empty tomb, is the way of God. Now this is a big claim, but people of Christian faith have embraced this and sought to live out this life-giving way of Jesus, often at great personal cost, since the days of Jesus' earthly ministry. I'm currently reading a book by historian Alec Ryrie about the history of the Protestant churches. It's called Protestants, the Radicals Who Made the Modern World. As Ryrie takes his readers on a 500 year journey, he keeps underlining the fact that for so many Christians, the core of the faith has to do with a vital, loving and personal relationship with this Jesus. I invite you to take some time to think about this for yourself. Who is this Jesus for you? How do you see Jesus? Do you find in Jesus the way, the truth and the life? And if so, how does this work out in your life? For those of us that have chosen to follow in the way of Jesus, it is natural to not want to keep this to ourselves, to desire to communicate with others what a, Jesus, what a difference Jesus can and does make to our lives. As is underlined in the few verses we heard read from the first letter of Peter, this is not a task just for an ordained minister like me. Now maybe the language of this section of first, the first letter of Peter seems a little obscure to our 21st century ears, but actually its meaning is simple. The writer of the letter tells us that all the followers of Jesus are called to be a royal priesthood. That ministry, sharing the story of Jesus in words and deeds, is not just for professionals or a special group, but is a calling of the whole community of faith. So my calling as an ordained minister is not to do all the ministry, but to encourage, teach and support the whole community of faith in its collective ministry to enable all members to live and share the story of Jesus. At times of strife and challenge, that all are called to ministry has been one of the great strengths of the church. The church can continue to be the church whenever or wherever there are people of faith. Such things as church buildings are a wonderful resource but they are not essential, as indeed we're finding during these days of COVID-19. You're probably aware that the church is growing very rapidly in China. Yet during the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s and 1970s, it was aggressively suppressed, buildings closed, leaders arrested and sent to re-education camps or worse. But because there were a few people of Christian faith who kept the faith in their homes, even if they couldn't do it in public, the church was not destroyed. And today the church in China is on track to overtake the USA in terms of regular attendance at church. So this message of Jesus is something that the whole church is called to share and to live out. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Take some time to ask yourself, what implications do these words have for me? I'm going to lead a short prayer now, which is a prayer of affirmation written by Roddy Hamilton, and you can look him up on the internet. Let's pray. May we honour your name, not by paying it lip service, Lord Jesus, but by trusting the vision it speaks of and the way it calls for. May we honour it by following you, speaking into the world with our actions and showing who we're chosen to follow. May we love in your name, speak in your name, care in your name, that willingness to touch the outcast, feed the hungry, remember the sick, visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked, give water to the thirsty, in your name. Amen. 
I'm going to lead now in a prayer of intercession, a prayer for others, and it's based on some material prepared by an English writer, David Adam. Let's pray. Living Lord, as you have called us to walk your way, guide us that we may do what you would have us do, that we may reveal your truth and lead others to fullness of life, that we indeed may be a royal priesthood. We pray for all in positions of authority, for all who are called to make difficult decisions in these times. We remember those who make decisions that affect the life of this planet. Grant them a sense of wisdom and a desire to seek genuine truth. We pray for those who do research for the sake of the healing and renewal of the world and its people, especially those who are seeking a vaccine for COVID-19. We praise you for all who have enriched our lives, for all who have built up the community, for those who have extended our vision, for all who have taught us the truth, for those who have set us on a good path. We remember our mothers. We think of our families and friends. We pray for them. We pray for all who are ill and for all caregivers. Our hearts go out to those impacted by COVID-19 and particularly for those in places without the resources to respond. And we pray for all who are struggling to find purpose and meaning in life, who perhaps wonder whether there is such a thing as truth, who are not at peace, who are troubled at heart. We pray for those whose minds are clouded or disturbed, for all those who have lost their way. We pray for those who live a lie and cannot face reality. Lord, lead us all in the way of peace and truth. Crucified and risen one, you have gone before us and prepared a place for us. We thank you for those who have run their earthly race and are in your eternal care and keeping. And we pray too for all who mourn this day. And finally, we pray for those whose particular needs weigh heavy on our hearts and for ourselves and our own needs. We offer these and all our prayers in your name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, go well into this week. May each day you know the peace of Christ in your lives. And may the grace of Christ attend you the love of God surround you and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forever. Amen. Amen.